Mark Weiser, Beezer says, I have not used a manifold and hoses for anything but recovery in about five years. Yeah, the only manifold I used was the Yellow Jacket one. And um, I, it's a nice manifold, but I, I like the probes better. Uh, the Y-Jack probes, I've used the field piece probes. I've used the Mantooth, the Testo Generations 1 and 2. Uh, what else is there out there? <laughs> There's wrecked, what, what are those things? The little green things that are awful? I don't even remember now. It's It's not good. They're not, it's not worth remembering. They're very bad. I, and I'm trying to remember everybody because everybody has a set. And a Sour Man has a set that looks like the Mantooth. Like their current set looks like they took the Mantooth design. I don't know how good that is because the Mantooth was like a low distance deal. I don't know. So there's a lot of probes out there. What do you guys uh, use out there? Go ahead and put what you use. As far as wireless probes, what, which one do you use? I bet most of you probably do field piece because field piece seems to be like the bee's knees for everybody. They're really good. I mean, there's no arguing about that. Field piece is good. They have a lot of probes. Testo probably has the most probes available, I think. They have a lot of variety of probes. They just have the lower distance. But it might not make a difference to you. Because if you look at Testo, and my gosh, we can go do that. Albert says, Testo, baby. Man, Blue Air says he uses his job links. Testos, Blue Air has the Fluke 325. I don't remember which one that is. Five, <laughs> Albert has got five manifolds that are Testo. <laughs> I like that, man. Which manifolds do you have? Out of curiosity. Have Testos, but not happy with the range. Yeah, the range is not as good. The first ones, the second ones are better. But in general, they're just not good. I'm going to bring up True Tech. We're going to look at what they have for uh, wireless probes. Hey, I can interwove in some sponsorship stuff. Uh, interwoven sponsorship stuff by Zach. If you go to truetechtools.com, use the shop talk discount code. Hey, and it's really critical that you use it because especially with playing skilled trade up, uh, True Tech is not giving me any gift cards. Let me just say that. I'm buying the gift cards you win. So the more you shop at True Tech and use my code, the better I look and the better that works out for me. And that's something that's pretty painless for you guys. So just if you do go there, use the code and that'll make a huge difference. And thank you. Thank you in advance. So there's a whole section on, let me go back to the other camera here. I'm going to the other desktop. There's a whole section here about probes. Here it is. So I don't know what everybody's using out there. I know there's like a big few probes and then no one else, you know, it kind of falls off sharply how popular things are. So right at the top of the screen here is field piece, the job link probes. And I'm guessing field piece is like the number one I'm thinking. Uh, Sam Andrews says, will the discount still work with the gift cards? You know what? That's an excellent uh, point. Whoever wins and goes to True Tech Tools, I'd love to know that. I would assume that the discount will work for the gift card owner, but not when you buy the gift cards. That's what I'm assuming. But uh, you know, you know what they say. I'm not sure, but I'd love to know what happens when you guys do it. Use it. Use the code anyway, if it gives you zero percent. Just use the code, man. Field piece, and we have lots of field piece stuff. And then I almost, oh yeah, I forgot the UEI ones. There is the UEI Hub Eight. They must have added something to it. it used to be the Hub Six, but now they have the Hub Eight. Let's see here. So we have two pressure probes. Looks like a vacuum probe. Two hygrometers. I don't know what this one here is. Wireless. I, I know what that says. Wireless outside temperature. Oh, that's interesting. So they have a wireless outside temperature. And, you know, there needs to be more of that. We need the outdoor temperature, too. So it would be nice to have more people doing that. I think you can just probably use one of them, like an extra one. But it needs to be built into the apps. Like if you have MeasureQuick, it's built into that app. But on their, their own apps, like their individual apps, I don't think it is. Probably with the hub it is, because here they are. So let's see. They have those. There's another look at it. The vacuum probe. I had those. They were pretty good. You have to be a little bit gentle with the psychrometers because it's just a folding metal probe, and they work really well. In fact, the whole set works really well. The pressure probes, they bend at a 90-degree angle, but they are more cumbersome than some of the others. So there might be times when they don't fit in certain places, but fit better in other places. But they were pretty good. I like those. They had good range, too. Their range was probably something in between greater than Testo, but not quite field piece, I think. That's uh, if that makes any sense. So it looks like, yeah, there's some, there's some pretty cool stuff. I didn't know they had all that stuff there. You guys can see the wireless pressure probes are called WPP1. Better than WAP. I'll tell you that right now. Wireless outside temperature. I think that's a good idea. 
They should just have a wireless temperature probe. Like an ambient probe you can put anywhere. I guess that's what you can do. I guess you can put it anywhere. But <laughs> yeah, what's stopping you, I guess? <laughs> you see, there's the psychrometer probes that have a long metal shaft. And it's, uh, it's cool because it fits better. You can drill like a quarter inch hole instead of some of the other probes out there on the market to drill a larger hole. But I mean, that's, I guess, not the end of the world. And that's how it folds up there. It folds right back in like a knife. So there's the Hub 8, which I think is nice. That's good. What else they got here? Let's see. What else they got? Shopping's fun, isn't it, guys? All of our women like it. Why can't we enjoy it? Why can't we enjoy shopping? Shopping for cool stuff, not stupid stuff. Like knickknacks for the house. Who wants that crap? Plenty of Testo. There's Testo everywhere. Let's see. Here's a. Let's see. Where's the biggest set? There's probably like a Measure Quick set that has like a million things in it. Let me see. Oh, oh here we go. Testo Professional Smart Probe Kit for Measure Quick. Oh yeah, and it's a promo. You can have this sweet stuff for a thousand dollars, guys. Weaver Maintenance says Robin Air Digital Stubbies Testo Wireless First Generation won them on Shop Talk. Weaver, you're the best. The, the S Man for chain for challenging calls won the S Man's on Shop Talk also. Weaver, you won a lot of stuff, man, over the years. You've really been you're really smart, Weaver. You're really smart. Uh, Blue Air says, I love my UEI manometers. I have a UEI dual port manometer. It's pretty good. I just got the Y-Jack one, so I'll be using it soon, hopefully. But uh, the UEI has done really well for me. It's like the EM152, I think. All right, so let's look at these bad boys. So the Measure Quick set is, looks like a dual port manometer from Testo. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Can I? No, dual port manometer, 510i. You get the... The static pressure probes, probably some hose in there. You have two swivel tees. You have the Redfish multimeter. You have three pipe clamps, two pressure clamp, two pressure probes, and three hygrometer probes. So I guess you're doing three pipe clamps. You have your discharge pressure, a discharge temperature as well. And then you can do power factor and everything with the Redfish. That's pretty good. Two pressure probes, and you have three hygrometers. And I guess one of those is ambient outside. Hey, Weaver, thank you, man. Over the years, Weaver's been watching the show for a long time. And he's won a lot of stuff. And, uh, I, you know, it's been my pleasure to do it because he seems like a really great guy. You know, not that I, me and Weaver don't go to barbecues together, nothing like that. But uh, uh, he's been around for a long time and I've had a, a lot of pleasure talking to him on the show. And say, Mark says, historically, UEI has meant unreliable <laughs> electrical instruments. They've been pretty good for me, the... Uh, there were some issues I know guys were talking about with a DL-429. It would have issues measuring multiple temperatures because they have a dual K-type. And it seemed like when they were measuring temperatures that were linked with metal, like both of those clamps were on metal, there would be an issue. Mark Beezer says, problem with the Testo hygrometer probes is that they are too short for a lot of situations. Otherwise, they are fantastic. Yep, I, um, I've used them a few times and they've done fine for me. So, uh, so far, so good. You know, the distance was the inhibiting factor, but distance might not be too big of a factor. And you get all that stuff for $1,000. I don't know. You get to add it up, see if that's good or not. Testo 6, I'm, I saw 300, new Bluetooth range up to 350 feet. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. 350 feet is not what I got, but I wonder if they've updated them since then. Is this generation three? I don't know. You guys ever get, <laughs> you guys ever get 350 feet with any of your Testo products? And I know this is like an ideal situation, but whenever I tested them in the open air, for you guys who are familiar with this, I tested the Testo probes at the ballpark where I played ball when I was a kid because there's nothing around there. There's nothing. The ballpark was empty. I walked the field with them, and they were the worst of the three. I think it was you. You I went to the center field fence. So you're talking about three, 350, whatever the fence is there. Then you have the Testos, which were probably in the 150 range because they were 30, 40 feet past second base. And I think second base is 120, if I remember correctly. And then the field piece was all the way out of the park. And I ran out of room next to uh, a drainage ditch. So field piece won the day, but UEI was pretty good. They were good. Nathaniel says, audio sounds good here. Hey, excellent. Appreciate it. Oh, audio is very low. We got to walk closer. If you walk away, it gets lower. You got to walk closer again. So if you leave the room to like go to the bathroom, obviously it's going to be lower, guys. Come on. I'm just kidding. Take it easy. I'm joking. Mark Beezer says, yeah, the Testo Pros have a much longer range than they first came out, still shorter than the current field piece. Well, I might want to test them suckers again. 
I want to test some of this stuff so I can kind of do it for you guys and so you can see whether or not you want to get them or not, but it's too expensive to take. So I might get like one probe. I can use measure quick though. I can get one probe at a time and assemble a kit made of all different kinds of probes. <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous. Actually, that is ridiculous. Now let's put the chat back up here. You guys can follow along with me in the chat here. So uh, anything else, guys, I might take a little break right here. I've kind of gone a little bit longer with this conversation than I was intending to. So we might have to go straight to the skilled trade up. Uh, was anybody intending to call after the break? I'll ask that. You can write that in the chat. And if anyone was intending to call, we might be able to take the call. But otherwise, I might skip ahead so we can play Skilled Trade-Up because it is a special night for Skilled Trade-Up. And I don't think there's anything else. Let me see if there's any of them oddball probes out there that we can look at real quick while I'm getting some feedback from you guys on what you want to do next. Uh, Blue Air says, Generation 1 and 2 would not get connection in the attic when I used them. That is why I went to Field Piece, sold the younger techs for half what I paid to help them out. If you call that help. No, that's help. It is, I think. I think that's help. I think it is. Oh, here's the awful ones. Oh, I'll put those back up. We have the the Refcos was the worst ones. Those were the worst ones ever. They were bad. One of them was broken like out of the box, and then the distance was horrible. It was like 25 foot. So don't buy the Refcos. I'm not even going to spend that much time on them. I'm surprised they sell them for money. I'm surprised they even... I thought, they should give Refcos out like you could... Uh, I don't, I don't know. You just don't ever buy them. <laughs> uh, the Sporlin, uh, poor Sporlin. These, these products are good. These Sporlin smart probes are really nice, but that is way too much money. Dude, that is 600, almost $700. And you don't even have air probes. Now these things are robust. I ain't going to lie. These are robust machines. They can handle refrigeration calls and extreme cold they are for essentially waterproof, I think. Who was, I think Ralph was spraying them with water or something. But man, that is way too much money. It's, it's almost like over the top too much money. Like someone's out of touch. <laughs> Mark says, never buy an electronic instrument or electrical tool from Revco. Pure garbage. Well, I can tell you, those particular ones were definitely not good. Joe Martinez says, I like to test those because you can take apart the pipe clamp, buy an electronic instrument or electronic... Oh, sorry. I skipped ahead there. I like Testos because you can take apart the pipe clamp and wrap it with tape instead of having to buy a bigger pipe clamp. Yeah, you can, uh, what is it? Some people do have those uh, larger pipe clamps or strap pipe clamps, and they do come in handy for guys who work on some uh, larger stuff. And uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go to the skill trade up. Let's see if there's any more about the Parker thing, man. You know, I, I hate to say that they're overpriced because they're good, they're not cheap. They're just, they're charging too much for them. It just seems like it's overkill because Sporlin also has these second generation ones, which are long distance. And I've used both of these sets and they're really, really good. But let me try to get back down here to them. The Parker Sporlin Smart Pro R temperature sensor. One sensor is 250 bucks. That is, that is a lot of money. So if you end up getting in the, let's see the pressure sensors, the, the temperature sensor is 250 bucks. The pressure sensor is $300. So if you put together a set of Pro R tools, you've got 300, 600, and then 1100 before tax, just about. That is insane. That is that cannot be No one's going to buy that ever. And they're good products. That that's that's the painful part. These things are really nice. And they are built for like some pretty I don't know. You can be crappy to them and they're going to work. But I don't, I don't know. Something, I, they miss, must not be pushing those things or something. I don't, I don't know. Or there's old stock or I don't know what the deal is. I can't explain it. It's just not good. So, uh, Albert says, I hope one day I can pull up to the site and check everything with a drone. Hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist. And if you want to see a new video you might not have ever seen before, check out this one right down here. If you want to find out more about the sponsors that make this show possible, you click on this box right here. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, please click here to do so.